With Mela DPS, tanking and healing rankings out of the way, it's time to take a look at the final piece of the puzzle, namely the casters and hunters. In this video, we'll go over each of the ranged classes and compare which performs the best. As with the Mela video, I will take utility and buffs into account, but I am much more concerned about who pumps biggest numbers as that's ultimately what matters. Most classes will have a place in the 25-man roster, but we're here to find out which specs will be stacked in the raid due to their high output numbers. I'm also attempting to rank the specs based on their overall performance in Cataclysm, so just because a class gets a low overall ranking, that doesn't mean they won't be viable during a specific phase. With that out of the way, here is the complete ranking for ranged classes in Cataclysm Classic. Let's start out with the non-caster, the Hunter. The Hunter in Cataclysm went through quite a lot of changes compared to the Wrath Lich King counterpart. With the complete removal of mana and the addition of focus, the Hunter became much less about basing your rotation of priority spells and much more about balancing your focus generation and focus spending abilities. While the Hunter was always good at outputting damage while moving before, they become even stronger at doing damage on the move with the addition of Aspect of the Fox and with the removal of having the stutter step to shoot auto attacks. Let's dive into each of the specs. The Survival Hunter went through several iterations during Cataclysm and spent a lot of the expansion in the shadows of the MM Hunter. But this time around, that will definitely not be the case. Survival Hunter gameplay essentially comes down to keeping as high uptime as possible of sniper training while maintaining a Serpent Sting with the automatic refresh of Cobra Shot. Then prioritizing Explosive Shot over Black Arrow and spending both Lock and Load procs on Explosive Shot with a brief delay. In terms of utility, the Survival Hunter doesn't bring that much to the table apart from ranged and melee attack speed if you don't have a Frosty K in your group. But there'll be several fights like Magma and Meloriac where we will see a lot of value from Ice Trap. They'll have incredibly strong damage early and consistently will stay towards the top of the damage meters for the entire expansion while perhaps falling behind the top pumpers just a little bit during Dragon Soul. That brings us to the BM Hunter, which, unlike the Survival Hunter, is strictly a utility pick in Cataclysm. In addition to bringing a ferocious inspiration, you can bring pretty much any ray buff in the game that's missing from your group, all from 5% crit to Bloodlust. Your damage is decent, especially if you can properly plan your kill command usage with your Bastille Rats and if you manage to have a high uptime of Focus Fire. That said, you're still quite far behind the Survival Hunter in terms of raw numbers. And that brings us to the Marksmanship Hunter. The MM Hunter is one of the reasons I'm sad we're playing according to the 4.3.4 tuning, as early in Cataclysm, they were such beasts and were performing extremely well with a fun, bursty playstyle. But those days are gone. You bring Trueshot R as a buff, which will pretty much under no circumstance outside of Heroic Dungeons add any value as pretty much every single raid team will be running a Blood DK. You can still help out with traps and whatnot, but you simply do everything worse than the Survival Hunter, including damage. That's why I'll place the Survival Hunter in the S tier, BM Hunter in C tier, and MM Hunter in D tier. And that brings us to the Elemental Shaman. The allure of Elemental Shamans in previous expansions has always been the utility and buffs they bring, but in Cataclysm, that is no more. While they have a wide set of buffs in their utility belt, all of them will be brought by other classes in 99% of 25-man groups. But with that said, the Elemental Shaman will still be a valuable pick in Cataclysm. They have high overall damage, being absolute turrets shooting out Lava Bursts and Chain Lightnings left and right. The cooldown of Lava Burst has a high chance to reset while Flame Shock is up, and with the Mastery having a chance to replicate the spell being cast, and with the Legendary Staff having a similar effect, the Shaman will at times have a never-ending stream of spells barraging at the boss. Where the true strength of the Elemental Shaman lies is in its burst damage. With proper snapshots of the Fire Elemental and properly offloading their Fulmination stacks, the Elemental Shamans can do incredibly high damage when it truly matters. In tier 11, pretty much every single boss will have some burn phase, where the boss either takes increased damage or where the boss has a soft and rage. And this is where the Shaman truly shines. While they won't be the absolute biggest overall pumpers in Cataclysm, they will be very solid and will be very valuable for certain encounters. I would place them in S tier for a lot of the encounters, but overall in Cataclysm, they earn their spot high up in the A tier. Moving on to the balance Druid. 
The Bao's Druid in Cataclysm becomes the first iteration of the Boomkin that we have today in the retail version of the game. The addition of the Eclipse Bar swinging up and down to empower our lunar or solar abilities removes some of that RNG factor that was present in the Wrath of Lich King system. Welcomed additions like Wild Mushrooms gave you a respectable on-demand AoE burst by allowing you to detonate mushrooms that you could put on the ground before the encounter even started. And of course, you retain your Starfall and Cataclysm so that you can ninja pull packs and break CC to your heart's content. Now, as much as I enjoy playing in Boomkin, I think that they struggle a bit in Cataclysm. They bring nothing of value utility-wise outside of being the go-to person for battle rest if you don't have a Rusted Druid. Innovate when cast on others is not what it used to be, and the spell damage taken and spell haste will be brought by other classes that have a high representation. Sure, there's an argument that Tranquility is a decent offensive utility for the raid, but anything that stops you from doing damage while channeling is generally griefing the raid more than you think. The damage is okay, but rather middle of the pack, and it's a class that you have no desire to stack, and as such, they earn their spot in the B tier. That brings us to the Shadow Priest. In Cataclysm, you ultimately play very similarly to how you did in Wrath of the Lich King with the few additions and adjustments like the addition of an actual DPS cooldown through Archangel and the Shadow Orb mechanic. You maintain the strength of being one of the best multi-target classes in the game by being able to multi-dot, which will make you incredibly strong for certain fights. Utility-wise, you bring Replenishment, which is not going to be that widely brought by other classes, and you will realistically be the class brought for the 5% spell haste through Shadow Form. Not to mention Dispersion, which is arguably the strongest offensive cooldown in the game. In Tier 11, you'll be at your strongest, then fall off as time goes on. You'll still always be a competitive pick, just not the absolute strongest spec. That's why the Shadow Priest gets placed in the A tier. That brings us to the Mage. Just like previous expansions, the Mage will start out decent, but end up busted. With the addition of Time Warp and a fun and engaging new playstyle, a mage should not have a hard time getting a spot in a 10 or a 25 man group. Let's start by taking a look at Fire. Unsurprisingly, you will have somewhat of a rough start due to your reliance on crit rating, but you will quickly become one of the strongest specs in the game. Cataclysm is when Combustion was reworked into becoming that iconic burst spell that leaves a dot based on your current Ignite, Pyroblast, and Living Flame. Combustion, in combination with Fire Blast being able to spread it along with Ignites and Pyroblast dots, make you an absolute beast when it comes to AoE Burst. As Fire, you have an Execute phase below 35%, and you're one out of the two classes to bring 5% spell crit, making you an almost required pick for 10 and 25 mana alike. But utility aside, the Fire Mage, especially after they get the Legendary Staff, will be stacked in Sweaty Guilds, looking to speedrun and parse. Which brings us to the Frost Mage, no. Arcane is a spec that won't see much play in Cataclysm simply due to how strong fire is. But with that said, Arcane still performs very well, and if you're someone who does not care about being a sweaty bin maxer, then it's absolutely a viable alternative. The Arcane Mage is very much in a similar position to previous expansions, where you have to manage your mana with stacks of Arcane Blast and excel in burn phases where the group is using all of its cooldowns. You suffer from having low damage while moving, so people with positional awareness and foresight will perform much better than those without. In a tryhard environment, the Arcane Mage will realistically only see play during Phase 1 as a top tier pick, only to be very quickly replaced by Fire. And with all of that in mind, I would place the Fire Mage in S tier and Arcane Mage in B tier. That brings us on to the last class of the series, the Warlock. Purple is a color that you can expect to see in your raid frames quite a lot this expansion. In terms of utility, Warlocks don't bring a whole lot outside of the 5% crit that is also brought by Fire Mages, but Hellstones and Soulstones are always welcomed in any raid team, even if Soulstone is not what it used to be after being changed to be a part of the raid combat rest cooldown. That means that if you want a raid spot, you have to do big numbers, and luckily, the Warlock does just that, starting off with Demonology Warlock. Despite being viable in Wrath, especially during the first raid tier, the Demonology Warlock has yet to see much play in our classic journey. But in Cataclysm, that will certainly change. The Demonology Warlock will be one of those specs that you will instantly know whether or not the player knows what they're doing. 
If you want to pump as high numbers as possible, you will need to have a mastery set in your bag with an on-use mastery trinket to use before the pull, pop metamorphosis, and snapshot the mastery values, then equip your normal raid set. A good warlock will pet twist on a lot of fights, meaning that they will use their fell hunter for a higher single target when using their demon soul cooldown, while having fell guard up outside of your cooldown windows. As a demo warlock, you'll be one of the top pumpers for the entire expansion, and your AoE capabilities are absolutely bonkers. But on Klee fights, however, you lose out to the Affliction Warlock. The Affliction Warlock ultimately plays very similarly to how it did in Wrath of the Lich King within the confines of the new Soul Shard system and with the addition of a few new tools. The iconic spell Soul Swap, which if you have the glyph, allows you to store the dots you have on your current target and apply them to a second target in one global. Since we'll be playing on the 4.3.4 version of the game, it will have a 30 second cooldown, but it will be incredibly strong in multi-target fights. That doesn't mean, however, that they can't do competitive single-target damage. Some people are swearing by Affliction being the superior spec to Demonology once you get some gear and with proper play, but that remains to be seen once we have properly functioning sims. Then lastly, we have the Destruction Warlock. You seem to, once again, receive the long end of the stick for this expansion as a Destro Warlock. That's not to say that they're not viable, but with the other two Warlock specs being so strong, there's little reason to play Destro. You'll still be casting your core spells from Wrath, like Conflag and Chaos Bolt, while maintaining dots and weaving in soul fires when you have procs. There is some copium being smoked about Destro Warlocks being stronger than we may think, but for now, it's regulated to a questing slash four fun spec. That's why I would rate the demo Warlock in the S tier, Affliction Warlock in the A tier, and Destro Warlock in the C tier. Now, keep in mind that power levels fluctuate from tier to tier, and just because you see a Fire Mage at the top of S tier, won't mean that you will top the meters in Black Queen Descent. In my opinion, Cataclysm has extremely good class balance and pretty much any of the classes on this list can top the meters if they play better than the people in their raid. But with skill levels being equal, there are definite winners and losers. If you enjoyed this video and want to see how your melee counterparts will stack up come Cataclysm, then head over to watch the video that I put out last week that goes over melee rankings in detail. If you're a tank or healer, then I have videos covering that as well. Plenty of more Cataclysm content is to come, so if you're on the Cataclysm hype train, then make sure to subscribe. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.